I've been thinking about retail managers recently due to, from my own experience or the stories I've heard from relatives or friends, you know, acquaintances, even stories on the internet, mostly stories on the internet, uh, but I see where they're coming from. He was the manager, he was a heavy set guy, and my guess is he didn't know how to wipe his ass. Because when you went behind him, he smelled like shit. Like literally, not like, oh, he smells bad, he smells like shit. He smelled like shit. He smelled like he shit his pants and just left it. He was just like a real low life. I'm gonna keep throwing the words to myself. <laughs> Our fucking manager, who was this piece of shit fucking woman who didn't know a fucking video game from the hole in her ass, worked there and got paid 15 fucking dollars to do nothing. Uh, there's always one quality that attributes every single retail manager that just seems to be completely inevitable. And that's the fact that retail manager is synonymous with asshole. On one hand, this seems like common sense, like, you know, dogs chase cats. But at the same time, I mean, it fascinated me. It seems rather surreal. Retail managers are an exceptional case of unpleasant people. It just seems like in most cases, when, and when I say most cases, I mean 99.9% .9 of the times, if you're a retail manager, you're just this, like, naturally born piece of shit. I don't know, just a really, like, specific category, like, it belongs, you know, in like a list, an, an archive of unpleasant people, you know, retail manager has a spot there because we all have those stories or heard of stories of, you know, like, because working in, in the industry of, of retail, I believe, you know, that's something most of us go through in our careers uh, or, you know, we know someone who's gone through that and it's like, okay, well, let me talk about the manager, you know, <laughs> what, what's the highlight of, of every single one of those experiences. Let me talk about the manager. Now, maybe, you know, a manager that actually was pleasant, was a decent person, but, but here's another thing, a decent manager is also, in my opinion, a very exceptional case of people because a decent manager is not the same as decent person in my opinion they're just like a manager that doesn't drive you insane but they're still a piece of shit <laughs> you know it's fucking crazy really you can, like i said you can think about it and i guarantee fucking to you that in your own ex like through your own experiences you know what the fuck i'm talking about I guess it was like one of those shower thoughts that people talk about. Well, this was more like a, like a bus thought, I'd say. Like, I was driving back, I think, from work, and I, I thought to myself, it's just not possible for a retail manager, you know, maybe dif different kind of field manager, I don't know, but retail manager, you know, like your 7-Eleven fucking manager or your Walmart Walmart manager, I'm not even gonna talk about things like McDonald's, that's not really retail, but on the same field, like it's just not possible for that person to be like a decent human being. It's just, it doesn't compute. Like, it's like trying to divide anything out of zero, you know, like you can't. So I just wanted to share this thought, but besides that, I wanna share my own shitty manager stories. I worked in two retail stores. One was a warehouse job. The other one was uh, guarding a cosmetic store. And both of those cases, the managers were cunts. So I'm gonna start with Yeesk. Now I worked in Yeesk very briefly. I worked in Yeesk for exactly one day. And that's because I was dealing with some 
personal problems, some serious problems at the time. Not the point, um, because it was enough for me to get the full-on Yeast Manager experience. In fact, I read more about Yeast Managers, and it seems like every Yeast you go, by the way, what is a Yeast? It's basically a, a bootleg IKEA, I'm going to say. But every Yeast seems to have this kind of thing. But now, that I, like, like I mentioned earlier, um, it's inevitable in every single retail case. Um, but this person right here was a very interesting person. Um, my hometown is a relatively small town, and this person had a reputation there for being a very specific, you know, dick of a person. And before I even got there, uh, my mother, who's um, a fairly reputable hairdresser, and she's heard a bunch of stories, not that she was too keen on knowing, like learning about them, but she's heard about this person. And she told me before I got the job, she said, consider it because she, the yeast manager, she is known for being this fun person, you know? I came to work right off the back, everyone warned me, like, we don't like her, try to get on her good side, like she has a few pets, you know, that, that she, she's on good terms with, but, but most of the, the cases, like, just, you don't even want to look at her, you know, unless you, you want to have your, your eyes like burn out <laughs> from the, the despicability. As a manager, of course, she's entitled. This just seems to be an attribute that applies to every single one of those, every single uh, retail manager case, entitlement. The kind of, you know, schmug attitude where you, she walks in and, and like there's a specific way she walks, there's a specific way she was going to talk to the workers. Now, here's here's the the really bad uh, instances that made her for who she is. While I was in her office, um, you know, that's I, I suppose where, you know, the managers want to give you a, a good impression about the job, you know, because I've had this in every single instance I've been trying to, you know, get, get myself uh, some work. Um, but, but here's the thing. One of the stories she was telling me was of a guy who worked there who was um, climbing, uh, what do they call it? Well, shelves, big shelves, huge fucking shelves, okay? Shelves the size of a three story building okay without a ladder because this manager did not believe in ladders ladders take too much time uh the manual lift takes too much time no we're gonna climb the fucking shelves like gorillas to get i didn't even understand how the fuck i was gonna have to do this if i kept working there but these huge fucking boxes you're supposed to take the fucking thing from like the top shelf and get it down. It's crazy. And so inevitably what happens, the dude injures himself. And so what does she do? Does she immediately rush to call, you know, the, the emergency services? No, she fucking scolds him. She scolds him for now her having to waste her time to bother with this. Now, does that speak like sociopath to anyone? Jesus fucking Christ. And again, let me remind you, this is something that she was using to give like a good impression of the job, by the way, when I was signing the, the, the documents. Unfucking believable Jesus Christ. And a lot of the stories I don't even remember. Uh, unfortunately, this is just the thing that stuck with me, and you know, like one of those really horrendous instances, you know, that was red flag, like, like, caps lock red flag, basically. 
and like I said, I was going through some personal shit, so I didn't, you know, stay there for too long, because basically on day one, I come in, no experience, this woman is scolding me for not reading her mind and knowing what the fuck to do. I construct a little hammock chair, she comes over there with a wrinkly ass, sits down there, okay, getting all comfortable, right, fucking for, for half an hour to, to fucking ch check my work, you know, isn't that nice, so anyways, I knew really quickly I wasn't going to stay there, um, and I've heard all these bad things about the place. The next day I call her, I say, listen, and, and you told me, by the way, that this is perfectly fine to do. If you don't feel like working, you can quit whenever you feel like it. So I tell her this. I tell her, look, this is just not going to work out. You know, like, like this was my first day. I'm sure, you know, it's not going to be that big of a deal. So I come in, start signing the paperwork, and she fucking tells me to my face, she's like, yeah, um, I hope you enjoy digging holes for a living for the rest of your life. I mean, I understand I've caused you a minor inconvenience, but, I mean, isn't that nice, you know? Isn't that fucking professional, <laughs> you know? Crazy, man. Like I said, exceptional type of cunt, really. But, uh, needless to say, uh, she continues having the reputation of being a, a town bitch. Not the right word. A town scum. Scumbag. And, uh, yeah, glad I don't have to work there. Really fucking lucky. Really, really feel bad for the people that have to work there because there's no other choice. Uh, other case. The other case was one of those, as I called it, decent retail manager cases, but big air quotes, because as I mentioned previously, decent retail manager does not mean decent person. I got along with this person and we were on good terms. Still not, uh, not a decent person in the slightest. Because again, she was entitled, same schmug attitude, but She's a manager, so he's got, she's got to do something to show for it. Um, but right away, what do I learn about her? That her, her cheery, positive attitude was complete bullshit. Because she basically hates everyone. <laughs> right? When I was getting my instructional for the hugely complicated job of standing in one place for eight hours and listening to the Hunger Games while I'm at it. Um, she was like, oh, you, you look out for those those other races. Okay, you look out, especially for them black skins, you know, for them brown, like darker tones. You best look out for these people. Okay, or kids is another thing. She's like, if you see kids, you don't take your eyes off them. And I, I understand in a way, okay, kids aren't as responsible and they like to, you know, mess around with some of the products, but I, I knew also from some conversations I've had with her that she just genuinely doesn't like kids. So right off the back, you know, quite, uh, quite a person, right? But, uh, again, gotta have one of those highlights, right? Gotta have one of those fucking highlights. Um, so we were having a discussion about some problems I was having at the time. Nothing like, you know, during the East days, but a minor inconvenience I was having at the time and I was sharing it with her because, I don't know, I just felt like, fuck it, you know, talk about it, why not? And she was like, you, you know, you think this is a problem? You think this is a problem in your life? My daughter ran away, she says. Not in a kind of like worried attitude or like maybe I should go and look for her or like anything. No, just, yeah, just my 16 year old daughter ran away from home and I'm here at work 
licking my fucking vagina. I don't care. You know? Because she wasn't using this in, in, in a means of like, oh, you know, you think you have problems. Like, like this is a problem. Like, I've been losing sleep over it. Like, no, she was just using this in the context, context of like, I have bigger problems in my life. Do they bother me though? Nope. So I don't think that's a problem then. Okay, just, you know, just my kid running away from home. <laughs> it all happens all the time. You know, it happens all the fucking time, you know? And then I, you know, I thought in my head, like, why would she run away from home? Why would a kid ever run away from home? Hmm. Great fucking question, isn't it? Right. Um, and that just really left a bad fucking taste in my mouth. Because the way I see it, a person that close to you, that important to you in your life, suddenly disappears. I don't know. I would be causing a fucking tornado in the city, rummaging the place, looking for, for the, her, you know? But this person's like, you know, one leg out the other, fucking, you know, hands behind uh, her head, chilling, not a worry in the world, you know? <laughs> fucking crazy, man, unbelievable. She was concerned more with me occasionally taking a book out of my pocket than she was with her daughter. And I really said uh, all that I needed to know about this person, honestly. Like I said, she was a decent retail manager because I know, I know what um, some of the more interesting cases can be. And I'm not just talking about the East instance, I'm talking about uh, the store, the snip, the clips uh, I showed at the beginning of my video and plenty of, of, of other stories that just seems to be, like I said, common sense. You're a retail manager, you're a dick, you're an asshole. I, I do have a theory on it because let's face it, retail manager is not exactly something to write home about. For example, yeast manager, she had a fucking cramped piece of shit office with no windows, fucking concrete walls. Not exactly something they'd make movies out of, you know, like, oh my god, Yeesk's manager. Jesus Christ, isn't that fucking crazy? Retail workers, uh, the managers, are some of the most sociopathic, despicable, disgusting, like, scumbags out there. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, like I said, I have a theory on why that is, but at the same time, like, it's just, it's crazy that the word asshole and retail manager are synonymous. Like they're the same thing. Like if, if you type, if you look for, for synonyms uh, of the word dick, you're going to find retail manager. It's in there, you know, if you gave them power, they'd be fucking tapping the release nukes button in a heartbeat. You know, they're exceptional folks. And really, that's what I wanted to, to talk about here and uh, bring to the table. If you have your own interesting, you know, shitty retail manager, or not necessarily shitty, you know, you might have a story where you had a really decent retail manager. I would love to fucking hear them. Because um, I'm, you know, like I said, when you're in that situation, it fucking sucks. But when you're out of it, it's one hell of a story. So um, I'd love if you were to share with... Um, with me, some of those stories. Uh, but yeah, those are the two that I have. Um, and there, I imagine, will, will be more to come because I'm a college student. But yeah, thank you for watching.